Good morning, YouTubers and all my subscribers. It's a very odd day today in South Africa. Uh, it's a, it's about a 10 o'clock in the morning, and I can already feel that the fans needs to be put on. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an air conditioner, so uh, I'm probably going to get fried today. If you hear the noise coming from my window, that is probably because of some dude deciding to do a major renovation on his house while he's out at work during the day, and uh, the contractors, you know, is going to interfere a little bit with what's happening in this video. So please just excuse that and uh, let's get on to the point that I would like to try and make. I watched the video by the Bible thumping wingnut this morning and uh, what was immediately apparent in this specific video is that um, recently, let me start off with, by saying this, recently he, 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 he put out a video whereby he asked that Atheists must make video responses only with regards to a specific point that he was trying to, you know, um, debate or um, get across. And um, what struck me about, you know, most of his videos thereafter is that none of, you know, the video responses was ever discussed. None of it. And it just made me think again about the, um, the whole, you know, intellectual dishonesty thing with regards to what theists believe. And um, it's those points that I would like to touch on today in this specific video. To make those points, I've taken one of his videos. And I'm going to show you some clips of it, and then I'm going to um, show you what I've got to say and um, how I feel about those specific clips. So, uh, without further ado, take it away, Mr. Bible Thumping Wingnut. At Frontier says... Uh in response to this other person, says, uh, now I have no idea what you're talking about. Am I required to live by the Old Testament laws or something? Atheism is a crutch for those who cannot bear the reality of God. And that's a quote of, from uh, Tom Shepard, Tom Stoppard, who uh, <clears throat> is some guy that um, was knighted, I guess. But um, I guess the guy is 75 years old from the Czech Republic. Well, anyways, he quoted that guy. He should have quoted me. Um, not really, but I do have a video called um, Atheism is a Crutch. No, atheism is not a crutch. Believe in a supernatural deity. That is a crutch. Because of all the rewards you will get from him for believing in him. Ever seen the movie Forrest Gump? When Forrest all of a sudden starts running like the wind and then washing machines and air cons and Chevy auto parts and all sorts of crap just breaks free from his legs and he runs really, really fast thereafter? That is pretty much what atheism is. We've been intellectually honest with ourselves. We've decided that whatever God wanted us to be, which is ignorant, is not good enough. We decided to play open cards with ourselves. And we, you know, especially those that deconverted from Christianity to atheism, all of us um, went through roughly the same thing. We decided that if God created us with a brain and with free will, He will understand if we sus suspend our belief in the supernatural just for a little bit and learn as much as we possibly can and see how that fits into our religious worldview. What we found, it doesn't fit in at all. You cannot make a square peg fit into a round hole. And that is exactly what happens once you suspend belief and you actually come to terms with the fact that there is no God. There was a reason a God existed according to man and according to scripture it is because they didn't know how to explain natural phenomena I know it sounds a very simplistic explanation being put forth but that is basically it in a nutshell F Frontier uh, was responding to the other person and the other person's an atheist oh my, the guy has no videos no subscribers, I don't think, but um, he spends all his time on the internet watching, giving thumbs up to atheist videos and questioning Christianity all day long. So I guess it's very important, his non-belief is very important to him. 
in exactly the same way as your belief seems to be extremely important to you. But uh, his response to the Christian person was, you are required to live by the laws of the Bible, and Jesus didn't change the Old Testament laws. You are cherry-picking the Bible, and if your God did exist, you would be going to hell for not obeying all the rules. <laughs> you know, here's something that's funny, okay? <clears throat> Premise A for the atheist is God does not exist. Premise B, Bible is not true. But then they bring in C, they use the Bible to disprove Christianity, which makes their argument completely uh, invalid. In order to show you that what you believe in is rubbish, you need to point out the rubbish in the rubbish that you believe in. Capish? If there is no God and the Bible is not true, uh, you can't quote the Bible to disprove it. <laughs> I mean, it's just... So atheists are doing that all the time. You know what theists do all the time? They quote the Bible to prove the existence of a God. It reminds me of that one little video which I saw about Ken Ham uh, trying to give his interpretation of a specific verse or something in the Bible. And right before he starts reading from the Bible, he says, So let's put on our biblical glasses. Do you realize how intellectually stupid that is intellectually dishonest even when you're deliberately trying to 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 undermine science evidence by making your own interpretations and basing those interpretations on something that's written in a book that has been proved to be contradictory dishonest fear-mongering I'm sorry you need to come up with something better than that it makes no sense and actually I learned that from one Christian who uh, I was reminded of that from one Christian who comments on um, on a lot of my videos and from an atheist who uh, recently made a video stating that um, it's not a good argument to use the Bible to disprove the Bible because you are giving credibility to the Bible and again let me get this straight I cannot use the Bible to disprove the Bible even though I can say things like and I'm now reading directly from your Bible in James 5 verse 14 it says um, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Do you do that? You probably don't. You take your ass to the doctor and you get yourself some aspirin. Let's carry on. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 34 says that women is supposed to keep quiet in church. There's a lot of women that's going to hell then. James 5, verse 1 to 5. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, your gold and your silver have rusted, and their rust will consume your flesh like fire. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and led a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. 1 Peter 3 verses three, verse 3 says, uh, Women are not allowed to dress up, fix their hair, or wear jewelry. A lot of Christian women is going to hell. Then it says in Philemon 1 verse 12, uh, that uh, you must return runaway slaves to their owners. Fantastic. Matthew 5 29 says, you must gouge out your own eyeball. So if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. Right. That verse alone. I can... It's funny, sorry, I'm, I'm laughing. 
Um, I just had a picture in my head of millions of Christians walking around with one eye. Um, give anything you have to anyone who asks. That's what Matthew 5.42 says. Um, and specifically it says, Give to those who ask and don't refuse who wish to borrow from you. Have you ever refused to borrow something that you own to anyone? Ever? You sinned. You're not allowed to pray in public. It says here in Matthew 6, verse 6, When you pray, go to your room, shut the door and pray to your Father in that secret place. You're not allowed to pray in public, which means you are not even allowed to pray in church. No matter what else it says in the Bible, this verse says you're not allowed to pray in public. Then it says, don't save your money. If you've got any savings, you're a sinner. Because it says, don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. You want to take your Bible literally. You have any idea how stupid that is? The list of what I've just read, it goes on and on and on. And every single one of these is New Testament verses. All of them. Don't tell me that the stuff that happened in the Old Testament is all of a sudden of no relevance. Just because of Jesus that died on the cross for your sins and magically wiped all of that away. That is rubbish and you know it. Grow a brain. Which is kind of my point. Um, if you're going to argue against Christianity, do it from your atheistic worldview. Don't jump into Christianity and our moral system and uh, then try to drive our bus of Christianity over the cliff. Like I said a few seconds ago, grow a brain. In order to prove to you that what you believe in is wrong, we need to show you what is wrong in what you believe in. Once you come to the same conclusion as atheists, welcome to atheism. Then your mind can expand and you can actually let go of all the bullshit you've been taught your entire life. I'll give it to you. You're a little bit older than I am. You've probably got a little bit less time left on this earth. And uh, you probably have a really good reason why you would like to believe that a God exists. Maybe you did some really weird shit in your life and you, and you, um, and, and you actually cling on to the hope that you are not going to fry in hell for those. I've got no idea. I don't know you personally. As I said in a previous video to you, I actually like you. The fact of the matter is, your belief system is poisoning your life. It is poisoning it. You believe that you are not worthy. Because you think that you are not worthy, you cling on to these promises, the false promises of an afterlife. And someone that died for you on the cross. Do you even know how stupid that sounds? Think about this logically. God, the Holy Spirit and Jesus is, is one and the same thing. It's been said many times over in the Bible. Yet, God manifested himself as his own son, which he then sent down to earth to die for us so that he could save us from him. If you've never thought about it like that, please start. But anyway, um, Jesus... Uh, fulfilled the Old Testament law and uh, much of the Old Testament law was for um, God's chosen um, people the Israelites and um, don't apply to us today and no it's not cherry picking it's it's understanding um, Old Testament law it is not understanding Old Testament law it is interpreting something that is supposedly the word of God if it's the word of God, it means he meant everything. He is supposedly a perfect being. He doesn't make mistakes, which means whatever he said, whatever's in the Bible, needs to stand true. It is not a difficult concept to grasp. If you are all of a sudden guilty of interpreting the Bible in order to make all the Old Testament things that you don't believe in anymore magically disappear, then you are intellectually dishonest. You cannot have your cake and eat it. I stayed in atheism as a crutch, that um, atheism as a crutch 
for those who won't need to suppress the truth. I mean, there's a lot of evidence that there's a God, actually. All matter, everything that we see, feel, hear, everything that there is, even ourselves, is evidence for a creator God. Um, and I stated that atheism is a crutch to help you suppress all that truth. That's funny. We're suppressing the truth. You are the one suppressing the truth, sir. Almost everything that happened in the Bible have naturalistic explanations. Science have proven many times over that we don't need to believe in a higher power to explain natural phenomena. That in itself is also not a very difficult concept to grasp. If you are deliberately denying science and scientific explanations, you are the one with your head up your ass. I'm now going to ask you a simple question, Bible thumping wingnut. Do you believe in Jesus Christ and that He is the Son of God and He was crucified in order to save us from our sins? I can tell you now already that your answer will be a resounding yes. Let me give you the reason why I believe that Jesus is not the Son of God. First of all, He was born from the Virgin Mary. Fact of the matter is, no one can be born from a virgin. It is physically impossible. Unless, of course, you know, with artificial insemination and all of those fantastical scientific things. But back in the day, it was near impossible to give birth to a baby if you didn't have sex. Now, the fact is, she probably, um, you know, had sex with someone, and because of that, you know, um, uh, sexual tra transgression out of wedlock, um, she needed to say that she fell pregnant because of this divine spirit that impregnated her. Uh, so the child then automatically becomes born, and, um, you know, he is being taught the story because, hey, you need to keep up appearances. Um, which means he now believes he is the Son of God. Remember, God existed a long time before Jesus existed. So everyone knew about a God. So he now believes he's the Son of God. Delusional. He then walks the land, um, uh, teaches people, feeds the hungry, and he does all sorts of fantastical miracles. The fact of the matter is, almost all of his life that is written down in the Bible is based on the story of Ulysses, which is a fictional character created 600 BC by Homer in Homer's written work called the Odyssey. If you don't believe me, go Google it. Almost none of what's written in the Bible is factually true about the life of Jesus. I find it fascinating that theists can be so intellectually dishonest. And see, there's that little phrase again. I find it difficult to believe that people can be that intellectually dishonest, that they will deliberately deny facts in order to keep up their faith. I'm going to try and keep some of what I actually wanted to say for future material, so that I don't end up repeating myself again. Um, this is just... A plea. A plea to sanity. Bible thumping wingnut. Please, do yourself the favor. Spend belief just for a little while and go and research the facts. You might be pleasantly surprised. Cheers, mate.